In this video, we're going to focus on how you can create a border around the point style image that we have added here. So let's start to look how to do this. The first thing what we need to do here is get a border template, which you can find here on chartjs 3com getting started, this specific link here, which you can find in the description box. Once you're on here, copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if if you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page and of course join the Discord channel. We'll be using this image here, but you can use any image to create the border around. So first of all, it was a specific type of chart, which is a scatter chart. So I'm going to say a scatter, save, refresh. Now we need to make sure that the data structure is matching. So we're going to go here. And then I'll just put in here three data points just to make it fast. We say here three by and then the y will be six. I'm going to put a comma here and copy this two more times. One, two, there we are. One and three. And then we have here maybe six and number three. Save, refresh. There we are. So we have these points here. You might notice them, but they're hard to spot. Anyway. What we want to do now is add the image and convert the point style into an image. So I'm going to say a comma. Then I'm going to say here, use point style equals true or oh yeah, I guess we can do that one. And then we can say here the point style. Well, basically we need to have an image here. So for now, this, I'll just say triangle, but we have to change that one. So right now you can see they are triangles. Let's change that. To do that, I'm just going to load the image in here. So what I'm going to say a constant image, and this image will be a new image object with the size of 30 pixels by 30 pixels. And then what we're going to say here, the image dot source, which is the URL for this, I will just grab here. This is the one I have on my desktop or on my download folder, but you could use any item it could be a png or jpeg doesn't really matter once i save that i can copy this and we're going to remove all of this paste refresh there we are if you look very carefully you can see it's being clipped off we can solve some of this by doing a comma here and then we're going to say a clip and clip will be equal to false so that will mean that it will not cut off at the very end uh, I need to make sure it's false, not true. You can see here it's being cut off now exactly. There we are. So now you can see this one. If your image is too large, it will be clipped off because the chart area is just too large. Or that the image is too large for the chart area. So we could test this by saying here 50-50. And then you might notice that the image will be cut off or clipped off anyway. We can solve this by saying here, let's refresh this. All right, you can see here, maybe we want to give this part additional panning. So we're going to say here, uh, layout, padding, and then specifically, we're going to just put it on the right side. So we can sp specify right side and give it eight, 10 pixel additional padding. Once we do this, is it even working? I am not even certain about that. Uh, well, we can say here this, maybe we need to have it larger. I guess it's already having a 10 or 20 pixel of padding. There you are. As you can see here, it's now moving a little bit more to the left side. So we have that enough space. So now we're done here. We should make now our plugin. To make our plugin, we're going to say a comma, plugins. And then we're going to say here, um, we're going to say, what is the nice plugin for this? The image style border. Make sure we have the style like that. Copy this constant image style border id will be equal to that and then we're going to say here before data sets sets draw we will draw this border so our plugins there we are the reason why i want before because if we do it after we might draw on top of the image i want to avoid that i want to be around the image but uh, then the image will be on top of that so i'm going to use a simple circle shape for this. So first thing here, object destructuring will be equal to this. And then we're going to say here, CTX. And then we have another one for the data. I'll be using that later on. 
Then what I want to do here is say ctx.save to save all variables above, and then we're going to grab certain values. I'm going to grab here the x and y coordinate position, because those will be important for me, but in pixels. So I'm going to say here, console log, I'm going to show you where you can find this chart, get data set meta, index zero, we only have one index, dot data. Save this, refresh, open up the console log, you can see here we get an array, and once we have this here, we have all of these items, you can see here the point, I guess it shows the same thing, but you can see here we have the x, y, and all the additional information that we need. I basically need only these two. So let's start to, to grab this. So I'm going to copy this. And what I'm going to do here, constant x equals this index 0 dot x. Later on, we're going to make a for loop for this. So don't worry. And I'm going to do for the same for the y. We want to make sure that we have first a drawing circle. Then what I want to do here is start to work on drawing the shape. I say ctx and begin path to create a image or begin create a shape that is independent of anything else. So once I have this here, I'm going to say here ctx dot stroke style. For now, I'll just give it black. Later on, I'll make sure we connect that to the colors of the border here. Then we're going to say here ctx dot um, line width which is basically the thickness of the border width. I'll just put it on one. Again, later on, I will connect it to this. So once we did this here, I want to say now ctx.arc. I want to draw a circular line around the image. For the arc, we need the x coordinate, the y coordinate. We're going to get the radius. And we're going to grab here the angle start, angle end. And then counterclockwise true or false in this case most of the time you'll be using it as false we hardly use this so what i want to do here the x and y are already given we have these here the radius would be basically from the center all the way down and then we'll make a circle around so to calculate how big this image is from the center to down we basically have here the height of our item so basically it's in the center so that means that whatever the height and width is divide by two this is an easy image because the image is just a square. So in this case, 15 pixels would be the radius. I'll just say here, constant radius equals 15 pixels. We could even cut out this and put that there up. And then we have that nicely organized. Then we have here the angle start. So we're going to make a full circle. We know that uh, for this, I'm going to use the 360 degree, so I can say constant angle equals math dot pi divided by 180. So why do I do this? We know that 2 pi equals a full circle. And then what we're going to do here is just very simple. We're going to say here 1 pi is a half circle, which is equal to 180 degree. So what I can say here then 0, and then I'm just going to say here the angle will be a full circle. That will be angle multiplied by 360. Makes it all very easy to read for us. And this here could be angle multiplied by zero equals zero. So just shorter is fine. Once we did this, I'm going to say ctx dot stroke to draw that line. Save, refresh. And as you can see here, we're getting one. That is this one here with a nice black line that looks quite good. What we can do now is we can even adjust this or let's adjust these here. Well, first, let's work on creating the for each loop. Because we want to make sure that every image has the color here or has a border. So we're going to do a for each loop and it will be based on this here. Remember this is what we used before. I'm going to say here for each. And I'm going to say a data point for every data point as a shorthand. Index function error expression. There we are. Then we can cut out this, put it in there. And once we did this, we need to make sure we have a proper indentation. And of course, we have to make sure that these here are being translated here accordingly. So we had here the shorthand for this or the x, but we can use a shorthand for data point, which is just data point dot x, which is exactly the same and is dot y. Then we have all of this here. We can save this, refresh. All right, there it are. There it is. Now what we want to do is the color. That's why we have this data here prepared. I'm going to say data 
dot data sets index which is basically this one here so we go here data data sets and then we can say here border color copy that oh copy this um that should be border color and then of course we make sure we have an the index in here so we grab that same color and then same for the border width we're just going to grab here the border width copy this put it in there save refresh all right that starts to work quite nice what i could do here just to test this make this five and there we are so we have this here nicely and then perhaps here, if you're like me and maybe you don't like this here, this legend that's been overlapping, I have another video how you can put space between the legend and the chart area as well. So you could do that as well, just search it on YouTube and then you have it all up and running.